what's up guys you got gypsy back here today with week 11 of the mpl uh this week we're going up against sebastian we're having our rematch against uh our last divisional opponent uh sebastian's a really good friend of mine guys so go and check out his channel if you haven't already it'll be in the link uh his, his link will be down below in the description uh this match is actually the, the only match standing between us and an undefeated season so my week 12 opponent just a little spoiler he actually um he dropped out of the mpl he'd had enough he thought that it had gone like 10 and 0 he just wasn't he wasn't having a good time uh so he just decided to click that x and you know we got a 3-0 win from that so as did you know Tog and seb the other two guys in my division so yeah that was uh that you know that's unfortunate but you know that's just that was his choice he just i think he was just a bit out of his depth and that's fine that's completely fine so uh, yeah, so this is the this is the last match we've got uh, of this season, basically of the regular season. So obviously I'm wanting to win because then I'll have gone undefeated, <laughs> had a flawless regular season, which is something that uh, no coach has ever done in the MPL. So that that'd be pretty amazing for you know just a nice thing for me to achieve. Um, but that's not going to be an easy task at all because Sebastian, as I said, he's a really good player and his team is just insane versus mine. Um, because he has like three, he has three amazing checks to my Mega Pinsa. If you guys haven't seen my first game against Sebastian, I recommend you go and check it out uh, before you watch this, just to get a bit of insight into like, you know, what our team matchup is like. Uh, you know, even though our team has changed quite a bit since we played then, like I've taken on Nidor Queen, I've lost uh, Nidor King, I've lost Embor. He's um, he's taken on stuff like Amungus and Manaphy. Our teams have changed. Uh, however, it's you know, it, his team is equally as threatening as it was back then if not more he's got the mana fee which is a huge problem for my team um and he's got three answers to mega pincer so he's got the skarmory he's got the reggie rock and he's got the manetric so mega pincer just matches up so poorly in this game like it does do so so well versus the other members of his team but it just has such a rough time like getting a chance to either set up or just dish out damage because he's got such great defensive switch ins to it and Mega Manetric is a really nice offensive check to it. Even if I get an SD up, like I just get outsped and killed by a Mega Manetric and Quick Attack isn't doing anything, even at plus one. So yeah, that's that's definitely uh, an awkward sort of, an awkward uh, issue for me to deal with when it comes to the building. Um, but, you know, I, I, I we, we won last time and I feel as though I can, I can win this time if I play properly. I, it's definitely going to be a tough matchup. And um, I was, you know, I was thinking he'd bring Skarmory, but as you guys can see here, he opted not to bring Skarmory, and I, I guess that kind of makes sense because we do have Zapdos, and I do have the Mew, which could be anything. I have the Nidoking, King, which can easily destroy a uh, Skarmory. Um, but Skarmory is also another nice check to Weavile, so yeah, I'm glad not to see Skarmory around, but you know, in saying that, he does have Among Us, which was something that I had considered he, he might bring, but then the fact that I have like so many things that just destroyed on my team, like. I didn't think it was, you know, a definite bring, but he's brought it, um, and so that's going to be tricky to deal with. I do have Wobbuffet, as you guys can see there, I'm bringing Wobbuffet this week, it's the first time it's hitting the field this season, so that's pretty awesome. And um, Wobbuffet <clears throat> is sort of my answer to the Among Us, as uh, I, do have, I do have a plan, like, I didn't just go into this, like, not having prep for Among Us, but I didn't think he'd bring it, so my, my sort of, my answer to it isn't sort of that reliable, but if it pulls, if it, you know, if I can pull it off, it'll, it'll work reasonably well. Uh, but obviously Among Us does stand in the way of my Toxic Spikes, which on Nido King is really nice versus his team, as you guys can see, it affects, um, you know, four out of the six mons on his team. He doesn't have Hazard Removal, so if I can get the T-Spikes up, uh, you know, we'd be looking good, but he obviously he has the Among Us state those up every time it comes in So that's definitely an annoyance and I don't really have the best answer to Spore spam because Whimsicott gets murked by Sludge Bomb and I don't have like safety goggles on any of my mons, so Yeah, uh, <laughs> the Among Us is definitely an issue uh, I see the Regirock and that that is definitely a roadblock for stuff like Weavile uh, Obviously Nudikin can handle it pretty well unless it's like a Sugarberry Lure variant with Max, Max Attack Earthquake uh, and I also have Whimsicott to deal pretty nicely with the Regirock. Uh, the Uxies, I figured the Uxie would definitely come to be some sort of switch into my Nidoking. Uh, it pretty comfortably checks any variant of Nidoking, unless I'm like a banned Mega Horn variant and he's something like a especially defensive variant. Uh, it's very nice versus my team. It can, if it's fast, it can poison stuff like my Mew and my Zapdos, uh, my, you know, my Whimsicott. It can uh, obviously set up rocks, which is definitely not nice at all for my team 
and then you've got Minetric there, which pretty probably be pretty standard Mega Minetric set to be honest. And then you've got Manaphy, which could be anything. Manaphy's a huge threat, um, but I do have ways to I do have ways to check it. I'll just quickly go over the team that I brought. We have especially defense, uh, especially offensive Nidoking with the T spikes as I mentioned. I'm um, rocking some just some coverage moves for his team to hit it super effectively. Pretty pretty standard Nidoking set. Uh, then I've got my Mungus, uh, my well, Whimsicott, um, which is a pr more offensive set this week. I got the switcheroo, uh, I can switcheroo my specs over to something like Amoongus uh, or the Uxi who want to come in and that basically will really uh, reduce their utility. Like the Uxi has a potential to be a real pain to my team but if I can switch this, the specs onto it then it's kind of neutered in that sense. I, I don't think it's going to be like an offensive variant but just purely due to the fact that it needs he needs a reliable way to check the Nido King. Uh, if I can check my spec, if I can switcheroo my specs to the Amoongus too that'll be far easier to handle as then my, my Wobbuffet will be able to uh, basically trap it and kill it. Um, and obviously Specs Energy Ball is really nice for this is stuff like the, the Diggers B, the Regirock and the Manaphy. So next up we have my Mew which is a pretty defensive variant uh, and it's basically Carmine Psychic Taunt Roost so I can, if I can get Carmines up and I can taunt the slower uh, status spammers I can basically want to be on his team. Uh, then we have Weavile, to, just a band set this week, same as I brought last game. No, Weavile's pretty, like, Weavile seems good on paper, but he just, he rarely gets a chance to come in and do stuff in, in this sort of matchup. It's just, it's pretty tough uh, for Weavile to do anything, and that sounds strange, but, uh, you, you know, you guys will see what I'm talking about. Uh, next up, we have my nice offensive Zapdos. Uh, here to check the Manaphy, unless he's, like, max speed, and he wins the speed tie. Uh, Defog is definitely important versus my team because he does have the potential to stack hazards as I mentioned in my last game and then we have my Wobbuffet which is just a standard Wobbuffet trapping spread um, and it's you know I've got Citrus Berry so I can like check Diggers be more reliably uh, you know as well as basically everything on his team just the, the Citrus Berry is quite nice uh, but that's the team so we'll jump into the match uh, I figured as though leading with Whimsicott was the best bet if you wanted to lead with Amoongus I could go right out into my uh, Wobbuffet, if you wanted to lead uh, anything else, I could get the powerful energy ball off, potentially trick my specs on, switch my specs into the Uxie if you wanted to lead with that. Uh, you guys are going to see, he leads off with his Minetric, as I lead off with my Whimsicott. Now, right here, I, I did expect him to go into his Whimsicott or his Uxie. Um, I, I go for the U-turn here, because I want to just sort of, I, I don't want to reveal my the fact that I'm choice locked yet, and I may want to keep my specs around for either you know the mana feed to hit it pretty hard or to you know deal huge damage to the regirock stuff like that so i, I just go for the u-turn right here as he switches out not wanting to risk any uh whimscot shenanigans he goes right into his amongus which is a, a good play in his part i didn't want to risk him you know not switching out to amongus and then uh, you know wasting my specs here so i go into my mew um and right here i'm pretty safe to fire off a taunt because if he wants to spore uh I, you know mew will obviously avoid avoid the spore and if he goes out to his Uxie I can at least taunt him preventing him from toxicking uh preventing him from toxicking straight up so I just go for the tox uh, I go for the taunt right here as he uh, reveals foul play now uh, that, that was pretty nice on his part in case I had brought something like Metagross with safety goggles because foul play does huge damage to Metagross uh so that was a very nice bring on service part now right here I, I, I contemplated going for Calm Mind however his most likely switching is going to be the Uxie, and if I can get psychic damage off on the Uxie, and if he's a leftovers variant, I can scout who who goes first as a sort of you know who, whoever gets lefties first will first will basically be the faster of the two. So I go for the psychic, here, just wanting to gain that valuable information. As you guys are going to see, he does go out to his Uxie, and that's that's all really nice for me. Um, he brings an Uxie, and it takes 10% from the side shock, so it's not doing much. It's a pretty uh, pretty defensive variant. Uh, and he gets his lefties first, as you guys see there. So uh, that's a very uh, good information for me to have. I'm not going to stand and risk getting toxic at this point because, like, Mew is so important. This game, Mew is like, <laughs> it's just, it, it is basically my win con essentially versus his team. If I can, like, if I can scout for, if he doesn't have toxic with Uxie, basically, like, and he's not a trick variant, basically, uh, Mew, Mew basically wins once Diggersby is weakened. So very important. Um, I just go into my Whimsicott just in case he was, like, a toxic variant and I could uh, potentially. You know, trick him the next turn. Uh, he goes for the Stealth Rock here. And, uh, you know, that's pretty annoying, but I do have Defog and Zapdos, so it's not the end of the world by any means. I just go for the Switcheroo here, expecting him to bring in his uh, his Amoongus on my potential Encore, or something of that nature. As we do trick him the Specs, 
as we get the Yachi Berry. So now I can U-turn out into my Orbifet. If we wanted to switch out there, then I would have gained momentum with the U-turn. Um, but the fact that he just stays in reveals, he probably went for something like Sludge Bomb or something of that nature. But you guys are going to see here, he actually goes for Spore. So now he's choice locked into Spore. And this this is um the next series of players, the next about 30 turns. I'm going to just pause it here quickly. The next 30 turns are going to be me stalling him out of Spores with my Whimsicott. I eventually, you know, locking him into the one move due to his the fact that he's choice locked and then struggling himself to death and I'm gonna you know throw in a few counters so um, I am just gonna skip through the turns because it is pretty it is pretty tedious and long to I don't want to sit you guys through it all uh, but basically this was a you know I really don't like like having to resort to this versus like a good friend um, you know if it was anyone else I, I really wouldn't care but Seb is like one of my closest friends so this is not like this is not ideal at all but um you know, I have to do what I have to do to win, and Amongus is standing in the way of Manita King setting up its T-Spikes, it's standing in the way of uh, Whimsicott doing anything. So yeah, it's a massive roadblock, and it's something that I need eliminated. While it's like setup fodder for Mew, um, I still want it out of the way, for sure, because, you know, not having, you know, a reliable thing to switch into Spore is definitely going to hurt me. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's pretty bad, but it's what I've got to do, it's my play to make. I'm just going to skip through, and as you guys can see, he's just going to continue sporing me. Uh, I realized at this point, once Whimsicott, once uh, Amongus was out of the way, then, yeah, as I said, Whimsicott had a far freer time versus his team firing off um, firing off its energy balls. And Nidokin could actually get a Toxic Spikes up, which really weakens his team. Uh, so eventually, he's just going to struggle himself to death as I'm going to start countering him. And now Warbuffet's inside, and it's looking pretty good. Uh, I've eliminated one of the biggest threats to my team, and in, in comes Diggersby. So this uh, this Diggersby was a potential like he, he could have been a setup variant. He could have been uh, he could have been basically like a setup variant. He could have been a life orb variant. Um, I figured that Destiny Bond was my play here simply because if I went for counter on his sword stance, he would have killed me next turn. If I went for encore on his return, he would have uh, potentially two it carried me if he was adamant life orb. Uh, and if I went for Destiny Bond, like I'm guaranteed to kill basically versus this Diggersby, and that's that's huge because again, once this thing's out of the way, Mew has an easier time versus his team. So you're going to see him uh, actually go for the spike here on my Destiny Bond, and this is this isn't too bad. If he crits me with return, on this if like if he goes for an attack here, I can return, and he crits me, then he dies because he, I've got Destiny Bond up. If I encore him this turn <clears throat> into spikes, then I can go up to my Zapdos and defog the Rocks away, which is obviously lovely for me, um, but I don't think he's going to spike again, I think he's going to return, expecting me to Encore, uh, expecting me to Encore on his uh, spike stacking, so I just go for the counter here, and you guys are going to see, I get that right, he goes for the facade, interesting play, it po does pop my citrus, and counter just narrowly misses out on the kill there, it does 99%, and this means that um, it was maybe like a bulkier Diz Diggersby, potentially like made to take on Will-O-Wisp Mew, which is a really really cool set so props to Seb for that that's a mad set on his part um, I just go for the uncle here expecting him to go for the spikes um, wanting to get at least you know a few more layers of spikes up versus me I uncore him now into a uh, spikes and now I can just go right into my Zapdos and defog all these hazards away which is going to be really nice uh, so I go for defog this turn because I don't want to risk him switching out and like me wasting an opportunity to get all the hazards away and uh, now I go for HP Grass as he goes right into his Uxie. So uh, this is annoying in the sense that he still has uh, he still has hazards up, which is a pain for me. Um, but uh, you know, at least he doesn't have rocks up and two more layers of spikes. So the Uxie is in, and like I don't really want to get poisoned with my Zapdos. Um, but I just go for the Zap. I go for the T Volt, just trying to get damage because if I can wear this thing down, then it's easier for Nudiki and Mew to put in work. Uh, so I do cop the Toxic that turn, and I don't really want to stay in and start defogging because he will always get his rocks up, like because he is slower than me, and he has the potential to go into Minetric and eat up a T Volt and get that plus one. I didn't. It wasn't really worth staying in there with Zapdos, so I just go into my Warfet here. So he goes for the rocks, and now I go for the counter, expecting him to U-turn, expecting me to encore him into like Stealth Rocks or Toxic. Uh, you guys are going to see Kanto will be able to take out the Diggers B, so that means no more spikes, which is very nice. And uh, Warbuffet lives another day, so Warbuffet's still at a decent amount of health. I can get rid of the hazards, then it can still do some work potentially. I go out here into my Nidoking, expecting a, expecting a T-Bolt or something, which could have 
taking me out of that range if you've got a high enough roll and if you calc my spread but he actually goes for the vault switch so that, that would have actually went, uh what, what if it would have survived that and uh he would have got a kill on something so uh i guess uh unless he was modest if he was modest metric then it probably could have taken me out um but i, I don't really know about that but um i just go for the <laughs> nitty king right here i just set up my t-spikes now because uh if i can't if I don't get a chance to defog with Zapdos, then at least I have T-Spikes up, which will whittle his team down in conjunction with my team getting whittled down by these two layers of hazards. As he brings in his uh, Uxie here, and obviously I'm not going to sack Nidoking King off to the potential Psychic. Like, he has been revealed to be quite fast, so he's he's actually outspeeding my Nidoking King because of my Muse speed creep. I know his Uxie is quite fast. I go into my Warfit here just to I basically sack it off. Potentially, you know, if he wants to go for something like... Toxic this turn, and he gets a little on new turn. I might be able to live it and go for a counter or something in the nature. But he actually goes with the psychic here and gets a crit. So, yeah, Wobbuffet is Wobbuffet has done, definitely done its job. It took out two members of the opponent's team. So that's that's absolutely huge for, <laughs> for its first game. I'm pretty happy with it. Shout out to Joel. Um, so he just goes out, goes right out into his Reggie Rock, and this is nice. I've got this thing poisoned. So I was feeling pretty good about this. Uh, while I could have gone out to my Zapdos and defogged at this point. He could have just brought right back in Uxi and set up rocks again versus my Toxic Zapto. So my real play here was to go into Mew and just fire up a taunt in case he was like a set of variant or in case he wanted to switch right back out to Uxi. And you guys are going to see that's what I do. Uh, the fact that, you know, I have revealed to be this sort of variant of Mew uh, makes, him think, makes me think that, like, he's going to prioritize getting the Toxic off on Mew. And this is very nice. The fact that I just got a taunt off on the Uxi means I'm guaranteed another turn of lefties. Uh, he's going to go for the U-turn, as I can just calm mind up once. I'm going to switch out. And he goes back out into the Reggie Rock. So, I'm just going to fire for Torn here. And this uh, this Reggie Rock could either just fire for Stone Edge. Um, or something like that. He, he does go for the Stone Edge here. And I did predict him to either, like, maybe do, like, a setup move, like a sub. Or maybe just fire for Toxic of his own. Something like that. Uh, but he does go for the Stone Edge, and I guess he's trying to bait me to roost up so he can get a pretty free switch out into his Uxie and then Toxic me in the next turn. Because, like, if Uxie's taunted, then it can't touch me. But if it's, if you know, he comes in on the turn that I roost up, then he can uh, potentially Toxic me. So I'm not going to stay with me this turn because it's so important. Like, it does beat the rest of his team. As getting a Toxic would, at this point in the match, when I don't know the rest of his mons, like, once I determine his mana fee set and his Reggie Rock. And I get the Manetric Whittled a bit, like, Mew getting Toxic won't be the end of the world, because at least it'll synchronize the Toxic back onto the Uxie, which is something that I'm, a trade that I'm willing to make, basically. Uh, he, I go into my Zapdos here, hoping that he'll go for the Toxic, but he actually goes for the U-turn, so he makes a great play here, goes for the U-turn, and now gets Momentum out uh, into his Manetric. So the fact that this is poisoned is nice, if I do get a chance to defog the rocks away, at least I've got Manetric and Regirock poisoned. But the hazards are really hurting me here because um, basically like his Minetric, uh, we're in a situation where like I had already brought in Nidoking on the Minetric, which I think should have signaled to him that I was Yachi Berry or some sort of like variant that was able to take at least two HP Isis from him. But he, you know, he makes the play there and goes for the T-Bolt on my Mew and now Mew is at a really low amount of health. So my wink on is severely weak and it's a 31%. So like I can switch in once more on hazards, but like if I get hit with an attack, by a faster one like Minetric or Uxie, even Uxie's U-turn will, will take me out at, at that range of health that I'll be at after Hazards next time. So yeah, healing up Mew is definitely going to be a priority. I'm probably going to have to sack something and uh, get the heal up versus a slow one like Regirock. So I'm just going to switch out here, go right out into my Nidoking as he goes as, you know, he was very unlucky to go for the HP ice there, like his play was to T-Bolt or Toxic if he had it. Um, and, you know, the Minetric is getting whittled. Granted, I have taken huge damage on my Mew. The Minetric is getting whittled down pretty nicely. I go for the Sludge Wave here, just in case he wanted to go into his Uxi, which is his switch into the Nidoking. King. Um, and, you know, by that, at least, I'd be getting a bit of damage off on him. A bit, and, you know, obviously more than Earth Power wouldn't do anything because he has a Levitate. So, in comes the Regirock. Rock. Now, here, I, I predicted him to go for the, uh, the Earthquake uh, or something like that. You know, if he had, like... You know, Earthquake was his play, basically, um, in, in my eyes, uh, or, he was, or he could have made a double out to Uxie. Um, if he, had he made a double out to Uxie, predicting my Earth Power here, then my my, my play made sense. As you guys are going to see, I do actually switch out to my Zapdos, so he was either going to go for the EQ or switch out to Uxie. And according to my, according to my calcs, like, sorry, according to 
is that the range of health that Zapdos was at, it does live like a round of toxic because it said after rocks it'd be at 7%, meaning that it'll live on 1% and I could roost up or defog the rocks away and the spikes. But as you guys are going to see, like showdown lies and it's not actually at six, uh, 7%, it was at like 6.1% or something like that. And uh, Zapdos is actually going to die here to poison. So he goes for the rest here, which is really, really nice building on his part. He's a Chesto Rasto variant, and you guys are going to see Zapdos goes down. So that is, that was a really costly, like, it was really costly for me. Um, Showdown really, like, <laughs> screwed me over there. But, you know, it was again, it was my fault for, like, not checking the, the exact percentage that Zapdos was at. It kind of slipped my mind during the match, and it, it, it did cost me that. Um, but right here, I can just basically roost up. Like, if he wants to switch out to Uxie, he can. But getting Mew healthy is my priority. So he goes out to Uxie right now, and... You know, while I have shown that I'm quite obsessive over not getting new toxics, like it's very possible that he could predict me to switch out to, to the Nidoking King here. So I just do just go for the Roost again. As he goes for the U-turn, trying to grab momentum on my predictor switch in like a Nidoking King or something like that. So in comes the the Regirock and we're looking pretty good because we're at full. This thing's poisoned. It can't hurt me at all because I'm def quite defensive. I can just start taunting and so he goes into his Uxie here and catches this taunt so <laughs> that's pretty nice we can start calm minding here because he needs the u-turn out and if i get a calm mind up then i can quite easily take on the manetric as our income is the manaphy king of the beach now because i'm a plus one plus one like i can effortlessly take a plus zero scald from the manaphy um my plus one psychic will be doing anywhere from 42 to 50 uh, it's doing over half, and, or it's doing about half, and with the poison damage he's taking, it's going to be a 2 KO. Uh, if I am a faster variant of Mew, like I could, I could taunt here to prevent the rain dance or the, or the tail glow or the calm mind. However, uh, if he is like a fast variant and goes for the tail glow, he's going to outspeed me and go for the tail glow, and then do around 40% with the skull next turn. So my play here is to Psychic, just to gauge his speed and gauge the damage. So I do go for the Psychic here, and as you guys are going to see, I actually outspeed his mana fee. So I deal quite a lot of damage, 42%, so a pretty low roll, but it is enough to 2 okay him. But he's obviously the Rain Dance set, as you guys can see, so he's a slow variant of mana fee. Uh, so right here, I just go for the Taunt, <clears throat> I believe, as the Uxie comes in, just in case he wanted to rest up. I'll go for the Calm Mind or something of that nature. If he wanted to go for the Scald and try and fish for a burn, I was more than happy for him to do that because that means I couldn't have gotten Toxic by uh, this, this Uxie, meaning that I could far easily 1v1 the rest of his team. So, yeah, getting the Taunt off there was nice on the Uxie. So again, I can just Calm Mind up now. I'm going to switch out into something like a Manetric. As you guys are going to see, he does go out into Regirock right here. So, I go for the Calm Mind. And now I'm just going to fire up another taunt because I lose nothing by it. Like, I don't know if this thing is a taunt, like, is a toxic Regirock. And if he is, it's not worth, like, risking it here. So I just go for the taunt. As the miniature is going to come on in. And he just goes for the T-Bolt, just trying to get damage. If he paralyzed me, again, I'd be pretty happy. I'd be very happy with the paralysis right there. Um, but he just goes for the T-Bolt. And now he, he just hard switches right out to his Uxie. As I just go for the taunt once more. So I double taunt predicting him to either vault out to a Zuxi or just hard switch. I do get that right. And now I can fire off a Psychic on his switch in. I see off to now stain and just go for the Psychic. So maybe he's trying to like... Maybe he's just willing to let Uxie get weakened. And he's willing to get it, let it get poisoned. I felt at that point in time he was just going to stain until this taunt wore off and then toxic me. But if he had done that I would have been pretty fine with that. Because Mew, like, Mew is at a range of health where... It can, it can kill the Manetric, it can kill the Reggie, it can kill the Manaphy. And if Uxie gets poisoned, then it's just putting itself closer and closer in range to die from... I think Banded Knockoff from Weaver actually kills it at, like, anywhere above, anywhere below, like, high 80s. So, that would have been pretty fun. I would have been pretty fine with that. I was just, just wanted to get the Uxie Whittle at that point. So, he brings in the Manetric to die to the, the plus 2 Psychic. As now Uxie can come back in. And I'm just going to start firing off Psychics because uh, while he Toxic me and it sucks, like at least he's getting whittled down as well by Toxic. And you can basically uh, 1v1 this Uxie at this point. Uh, the hardest thing it has to hit me with is Psychic, meaning that something else on his team has to take a plus 2 Psychic after it switches in. As well as the Toxic damage, so I read your rocks going to come in here and... You know, it takes it pretty well actually, it takes only 59 from a plus 2 Psychic, so Regirock is really really bulky, it's got 100 speed F as well, uh, it's definitely like deceptively especially bulky uh, with investment too, so 
Uh, he's just going to come on back out. And I'm just going to roost up here because uh, I will be like putting myself at a higher amount of health than the Toxic is whittling me down. So yeah, I was pretty happy with that. Uh, and, and if anything, man, if he was just going to come back in and take a round of, a round of poison damage, uh, guaranteeing it's going to go down to a plus two Psychic. So once more, I'm just going to fire off a Psychic as he switches back out into his Uxie. I'm uh, just trying to you know whittle my Mew down with the Toxic damage. But this Uxie is getting whittled down as well. And at this point, uh, Weavile just cleans up with knockoff. As Manaphy, I believe, is in range to go down after one more round of Psychic. Uh, one more round of Poison Damage. I think he is like a, a defensive Manaphy spread. Maybe to tackle my Weavile better. So that does make sense. <clears throat> and as you guys are going to see, like, you know, Muse, Muse is one of the warning uh, the rest of his team. And I can just Psychic to take out the Uxie here. It'll die to Poison Damage. And now we've just got to worry about the Manaphy, who we know we do have speed from earlier in the match. So Mew can, yeah, Mew can take out the Manaphy here with, with a plus two Psychic. And that's going to be my game versus Sebastian. So I hope you guys enjoyed. We are now, yeah, we are now undefeated in the MPL. That's amazing. We're 12-0 and I'm really happy with that. Like, it's been a, it's been a really fun season. And um, Mew's, Mew's definitely put the team on its back multiple times, multiple games. Uh... Obviously, like, this game, I was, you know, I had to resort to the Wobbuffet play versus the Amoongus. Wasn't, wasn't like, you know, I don't, I don't really like doing that versus friends at all. Like, except for my boy, and that was, that was, like, hard to do, but, like, you know, he was a good sport about it. We, talk, we spoke about it after the match, and he, you know, he recognized that was my best play. Even though it was, like, obviously tough to play against the Wob, like, you know, he understood the reasons, uh, my reasons for doing so. Uh, so that's that. Um, obviously, like I, I don't really like playing against friends. It's just not something I enjoy doing because one of us has to come out with a loss at the end of the day, and you know it never feels good. But if I'm gonna lose, then I'd like it to be a, a friend anyway. So we all sort of share that mentality. So it is what it is. Um, check out my boy Sebastian. His side of the battle will be going up. Obviously, uh, he's an awesome dude, and he's an amazing Pokemon player, and he's got like the most hilarious and also competitive content on his channel. So go and check it out. I'll put it in the link below. Um, check out the rest of the MPL guys if you haven't already. Uh, playoffs are fastly approaching and that's going to be pretty hype when that comes around. So you guys like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you enjoyed the match, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I will see you guys next time for more CFA and MPL content.